Hi, I am pastor and missionary Alan Rich from the Sharing Center Ministries, uh, the Alan Rich Ministries. You can see uh, the presentation and uh, all my videos on sharing-center.com. Please, if you are watching this video on YouTube or a public video site, come to sharing-center.com because there are some videos <coughs> which have not been accepted on YouTube and also you will see them in their context. So maybe there, there is a video you like and on, on the page on sharing-center.com you will see others but if you are on a public site, you will never find uh, <clears throat> the others. Today I'm going to talk about uh, superstition and uh, the fe uh, fear, to be afraid of things. I'm doing this video now because we are <clears throat> the uh, 12 uh, December 2012, 12, 12, 12, and there are a lot of superstition. Uh, every time there are special numbers, um, I I was here. I lived, you know, the 6th June uh, 1966, 6666. Of course, the 7th July 77, 7777. The 8th uh, August uh, 888. I was in Malaysia. You know, Malaysia is. Uh, <coughs> there are Malay people. There are Indian people and Chinese people, and it, it's a, a special number for the Chinese number eight. And on that day, I didn't even uh, <coughs> notice that we were the 8888. But I saw a great celebration. And I, I used to, when I'm in, in a country where there are Chinese or a Chinese country, to see some celebration. And I thought, oh, what is it today? What is it? Is it a, <coughs> a special day? And they, they told me uh, it was just because it was the 8888 and they were all playing you know, games to win a lottery and they were getting married on that day. And uh, today we are the 12, 12, 12, 12 and uh, it's the last time for a long time because there is no uh, 13 uh, months. And the next time it should be uh, in, uh, I guess, 89, 89 uh, years. The 1st of, Ju <coughs> of January two, uh, 2001. So... I want to speak about superstition because for many years now I have been meditating and looking in the Bible and I was very surprised not to find this word. And it was like uh, the Bible was not talking about superstition. And I was, I was uh, really, you know, I, I, I didn't understand why. And for many years, not one year, two years, many years, I thought why... Uh, why does the Bible is not talking about this topic when in the world there are so many and maybe the majority of people they are superstitious now you can be superstitious because of your education your background or cultural cultural background and there are things you know you are superstitious but there are things maybe you don't realize that you are superstitious uh, for me like in Europe and in France uh, yeah, always my parents, they, they were telling me, yeah, uh, if you meet a black cat, you're going to be, uh, you, you're going to have a trouble. If you go under uh, a ladder, you know, you're going to have a problem on the maybe Friday 13. It's not a good day. Some people, they say it's a, it's a good day, <coughs> etc., etc. And they might be local uh, superstitions. And... Uh, also, uh, you can develop your own superstition without uh, knowing. Uh, of course, some people, they, they even get some uh, sickness out of it. Uh, you know, if they do not turn off uh, the light uh, seven times or eight times, they will die. But there are lighter problems. And maybe you put yourself uh, under uh, bondage without uh, realizing it. And as a Christian, you don't need to live under bondage. On the contrary, Jesus Christ came to set you free and set you free completely. Amen. <clears throat> um, so I understood the Holy Spirit uh, <coughs> revealed to me uh, 
that why the word superstition is not written in the Bible, but in fact there is a, a synonym, and this synonym is fear, or to be afraid, yes? Because superstition is to be afraid, and uh, fear is a, an emotion. There are good emotions and bad emotions. There are emotions that uh, come from obedience, and there are emotions that come from disobedience and sin. <clears throat> now, the first consequences of sin, God in the Eden said to uh, Adam, if you eat the fruit uh, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, what will happen? He said, you will die, die, or you will surely die. And it happened. But the first thing that, the first consequences of sin that uh, Adam lived or, <coughs> or uh, uh, had, of course, it was not like instant death. It's not like Adam die on the spot. No. What was it? We're going to see. And you will see. I'm sure you, if you don't know, you have guessed because of the title of the sermon. But you see in Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, uh, we can see from the 9, the, you know, when Adam uh, sinned, then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. I was afraid. <clears throat> this is the first consequences of sin for humanity, for Adam, to be afraid, fear. And since then, uh, the devil is surfing on that great emotion for him. It's a, a lot, a lot, a lot of Christians. Um, they are uh, <coughs> progressing in their spiritual life. But concerning emotion, especially uh, fear, uh, they don't know how to deal and the, 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 the devil has so many people under uh, his uh, claws by being able to manipulate them to make them fear. Even using the word of God, you know that, but it's not the topic today. As a Christian, uh, Jesus died on the cross so that we can <clears throat> be blessed again, enter again into the blessing that was uh, ours at first, yes, to get out of sin, to get out of the world, to get out of the curse. And in the presence of God, in the blessing of God, there are many things, there are emotions. But one emotion that is not is fear. We can see that in the first uh, book of John, first epistle. It's not the, uh, the gospel. Huh? It's at the end of the Bible. It's a small uh, book. There are three books, epistle. So it's first, the first book of John, chapter 4. Verse 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love, <clears throat> and God is love. So, fear the bad fear, there is good fear, but the bad fear is not from God. Of course, you, you know, we, we say that we, ask, we have to fear God. <coughs> this is a good fear. It's not to be scared. Unfortunately, in English, you don't have two words because it, uh, there should be two words. Like in French, we have two words. One, one for fear, the good fear, which means fear without being scared. You know, the fear of God, the fear of... Uh, our parents, you know, to respect them, and the fear to, we, where we are scared, where it's negative. <clears throat> so it's easy to, it's more easy, easier to understand. For example, in French, 
but you have to understand those two aspects of fear. So the fear, the bad fear, is not in the love, it's not in the Holy Spirit. So you should not fear, so you should not be superstitious, because to be superstitious is to fear. Is you, you walk somewhere, then you see a black cat, you have a fear. And then you, you're going to think, oh, <clears throat> in my mind, I have been told that if I see a black cat, I may have, whatever, maybe something very bad may happen. So maybe in your culture, they say, be careful all day long. <clears throat> so you're going to be careful all day long because of that. You're doing, going to be in fear. And if nothing happened, the next day you wake up, you say, ah, oh, great, I didn't have problem. Maybe in another culture, they will say, be careful three days, you know. And if ever something bad happened, you will say, oh, that was because of the black cat. This is not good. Huh? Uh, this is a torment. You are being tormented and this torment is not peace and the fruit of the Spirit is peace. So it doesn't come from God. So you have to be freed from that. And <clears throat> you know when you are born again, you, you come, become a Christian, you, when you're born you're a little baby. That means that the, the flesh taking all the place and when, when you are growing spiritually, your inner being, your flesh is getting crucified and smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, at one point, you, will, you want to walk with God, but you realize that as you are gaining spiritual things, you are losing <coughs> yourself, your soul. And if you are not ready from the beginning to die at yourself and to crucify your flesh, at one point, you're going to say, but I don't want to die. I want to follow God. I want to, my spirit to... Uh, progress and I want the good thing of God but I don't want to lose the good thing of my flesh so some Christian then they are what we say you know living one foot in the church one foot in the world or you know like yeah he's spiritual but he's also carnal kind of uh, yeah, we have to be wise we must not be extremist spiritually you know we must keep uh, a foot on the ground and in this part of the flesh you are letting <coughs> in you, there might be fear. And although you are uh, a good Christian, you are maybe a pastor, you are speaking in tongues, you are preaching or whatever, maybe every time you walk and you see the number 13 or you, I don't know what, you fear. This is not normal. You have to crucify and get rid of that. It does not come from the <coughs> Spirit uh, of God. We can see that in Roman. The book of Romans, <coughs> chapter 8. And it is said, Romans 8, verse 15, You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit he's talking, referring to here, is of course the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God is not a spirit of bondage. On the contrary, it's the spirit of freedom. That's why so many Christians are abusing the Spirit of God. And they're taking liberty, freedom, to uh, disobey, to wait, and to do whatever they want. So the Spirit of God is not a spirit of bondage, it's, but, uh, sorry, a, a bondage again to fear. So the Spirit of God will never use this bad fear like the demons, the, the evil spirits or the devil is using. The devil is using the fear, the wrong fear, to make you do something or to make you stop doing something. <clears throat> but the Spirit of God will never use this fear. Of course, he can use the fear of God, the good fear. But he, the Spirit of God will show you, tell you something, and then you have the freedom to refuse or to accept it. But uh, the, the demons, the evil spirit, they will use the wrong fear to um, put you in bondage. 
because the spirit of God is a spirit of adoption where you can say God father and a good father that does not put his son his daughter in bondage or in in a wrong fear amen <clears throat> so most of the people they are under bondage in this world and one of the reason <coughs> is fear and it may be superstition uh, we're going to see an, in uh, Hebrew, Hebrew, sorry, uh, chapter 2. Verse uh, 15. He's speaking about Jesus who came to release those who, through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So the fear are bringing us in bondage and Jesus came to free us from bondage to so that we may be free uh, it is saying in John 8 uh, uh, he who the son set free is uh, <clears throat> really free uh, it's not the right word in uh, in English but I'm sure that for many uh, of you, <coughs> you 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 understand what I mean So, as a Christian, you still may have superstition, maybe things you may, <clears throat> you may know, thinking, yeah, okay, I'm with God, I am baptized in the Holy Spirit, I walk with God, but you never know, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't cost anything not to walk in front of the number 13, or, you know, if I see... Uh, a black cat uh, just make a prayer to protect myself uh, whatever this is not good <coughs> you have to let your uh, flesh your old person uh, be renewed in the spirit and when you are renewed and walking in the spirit you can uh, go anywhere on the 13 you can do you can do whatever before you were afraid of because you will be set free you will not be in bondage anymore and you have to ask god to <coughs> free you so we're going to make a prayer you're going to repeat after me for two things to to so that you may be free uh, of uh, superstition and if ever also which is very important there are thing, things in your life you still under superstition but you don't even realize because for you it's like part of your of your of your life of your education that the ask that the spirit of god will reveal and show it to you and you can get rid of it because there is no fear there is no superstition in love so you're going to repeat after me, <clears throat> repeat only what you agree, and you can of course use your word, as you see I don't speak uh, English very well, so uh, what, what is important is uh, what you are understanding out of my uh, message. So you're going to repeat after me. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ, because you died on the cross for me. And you died instead of me to save me, to heal me, and to set me free. I believe, Jesus, you can set me free from any bondage. Jesus Christ, please set me free from the bondage of superstition. Jesus Christ, please set me free from the bondage of fear. Holy Spirit, please reveal to me any hidden fear that I may have in me any hidden superstition I may have and show me how to be uh, to be set free from them and I make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ 
Amen. So, uh, for those of you who speak, uh, who understand French, you can come on my uh, site. When you go to sharing com, you see flags, uh, American, French, and Spanish flag. You can click on the French flag. There are many more videos, uh, many, many, many more, hundreds of videos of teaching. And also there are my books that I didn't have time yet to translate in, Fran in English. There are prayers, a uh, book of prayers, uh, where you can be set free of all those fears. So you can also contact me on my uh, different uh, helpline. Uh, and I, uh, uh, I will try to answer your question or to help you. So I am Pastor and Missionary Alan Rich, and I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I see you soon. Bye-bye.